Well, good evening, everyone. It is 5.30 on uh, March the 7th. This is Robert Stevenson. Uh, I'm going to call to order the Sussex County Granville Regional School District School Committee regular meeting for tonight. Can I get a motion to enter in the meeting? So Second. I'm going to show a hands to enter in the meeting. Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 700. Can I get everybody to stand for the federal leadership? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Right. So, in your package, we have the minutes from our meeting from the 14th, and I get a uh, motion to enter the minutes. Uh, yeah. Any questions on the minutes? I get a show of hands to accept the minutes. Okay. Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 601 with Ryan abstaining. All right. Uh, warrants. We've got warrants going around. If you guys can take care of those, that'd be fantastic. Correspondent, Superintendent Willard, do you have anything down? I do not. Okay. Public comment. Do we have anybody here? That is the public comment. I think everybody is part of the district. So looks like we're going to go through public comment. Okay. Best part of the night. <laughs> what do you got for us tonight, guys? <laughs> I had something a little more exciting. But, um, so students are back from February break, and we're hoping it warms up. And we also would appreciate if the high schoolers would be allowed to go slip. <laughs> During the day, <laughs> well, you know, with new opportunities, you never know. People may be in positions, you never know. You know, kids want to go sledding. I say, Is it affordable? <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> winter sports have wrapped up their season in the past few weeks. Girls and boys basketball both played their last away games in the state tournament. Um, the indoor track team sent four athletes to the statewide pentathlon in Boston. And each athlete competes in long jump, high jump, hurdles, the 1,000 shot put, and then their scores are combined for an overall score. Um, spring sports are beginning soon. NHS is hosting another volleyball tournament tomorrow. So for those of you in high school, they should be the team. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this week, Mr. Termel sent out a schedule of events to parents regarding the upcoming things for seniors who only have about 50 days to work. And finally, the Drama Club has started preparations for the spring musical Shrek, which will have shows Thursday the 23rd in March to Saturday the and we're reaching the grind time at this point. We got like two weeks and then we have like our tech week is, which is when we're at the school till like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. So we're going to run that time. Food coming in. Oh, yes. Food. That's the best time. Yeah. Frankly, that's the only reason why I did it. <laughs> so are we going to be expecting countdown clocks when you come like for the next bunch of meetings? Like of X amount of days left? He's already bribing me with donuts. <laughs> she doesn't know why. She's just giving me donuts. I say, what's this for? She's like, I'll let you know. Oh, there's a free uh, Two senior skip days. <laughs> All right. And she did that last year. Yeah, I know. I know. They had half the class. Yeah, you know, I know. It was a little. Yeah, you know, it goes crazy sometimes. Okay. Are you guys all set? Yes. yes. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much. You did great in front of the crowd. All right, educational presentation. Uh, Superintendent Willard, I guess I'm going to let you start off with this. Okay, and then we'll pass it on to you. But, yes. yes. So I'd just like to introduce everybody tonight. Um, as you know, there's been some changes um, at Central Office. This has been a, a, a very busy year here at Central Office. Um, we, do had, we do have an opening for a director of finance and operations. Um, and we, well, you as the school committee will be taking a vote today to appoint um, Principal Joseph Tremell um, as the Interim Director of Finance and Operations. Uh, I have worked with Joe for seven years now. Um, I can tell you that Joe is the kind of person that I like to work with because he doesn't agree with me all the time. 
he pushes back on me, he challenges me, he makes me look at things in different ways. Um, he lets me know when my meetings are running too long, and um, but he always has my back, and he's always willing to learn and try new things. Um, over the past few weeks, um, I have asked Joe to step up while running the school to handle some of the um, operations functions of the job. Um, he has done so. He has reached out to people in the community. Um, he's already starting to make connections in um, the business field, um, as you say, because we're the singletons. And so um, I'm really excited um, that he's willing to uh, step into this role. And uh, I know he's ready for it. And um, I know that he only has the best interest of our school district because um, you've been here nine years as yeah. the principal of the regional school. And, uh, and, I, and I know his heart is where my heart is and it's um, in wanting what's best for our school district. So. So you can do that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate the, the confidence that Superintendent Willard has had in me over the last nine years, not only at the regional school, but in, in uh, giving me the responsibility in this opening. And so uh, if I was granted that opportunity to step into this role for the next few months, then I would um, absolutely give it my best and, and support uh, the students and the people in the towns um, to the best of my abilities. Super. That's it. So I guess uh, yeah. this interim position and when, if we haven't yet posted, when are we posting and when are we looking to hire a permanent replacement? So we are not posting the position. If we did decide to post, we would probably post um, towards the end, middle of May, end of May. Um, I don't anticipate having to post. Um, I anticipate Joe being able to do the job and doing the job well. Um, as I said, he does have a lot of connections already. In um, He was already on the phone today with East Long Meadow. Um, I don't even know all the people that you yeah. talked to today, but he, he has a connection of people that he can already reach out to and, and talk with. And um, like I previously will get him a coach. Um, and we would do a formal appointment um, July, as of July 1st. So this interim position goes for the remainder of the school year. The school year and then a formal appointment yes. in July. Yes. So, what we'll, so what we'll have as an opportunity in front of us is tonight, what we're looking to do is to appoint Joe as the interim in this interim position for the remainder of the year. We will then revisit this at the end of the year and determine as a committee whether we want to appoint Mr. Tremell into this position going forward, which would obviously exclude us from having to put it out to post. Um, if for some reason we do not want to have him continue in the position, then we would open up the position for posting. Okay. And who in the meantime, for the remainder of the school year, will be filling Mr. Tremell's shoes at the regional school? That's a great question. So at 2.15 today, <laughs> I had a staff meeting. Um, up at the regional school, and we appointed, um, if things go according to plan tonight, Ms. Serena Shorter will be the interim principal up at uh, Southwick Regional School for the remainder of the year, which I think is kind of neat because she stepped into the Woodland job um, without ever the thought of taking over as a principal. And I was I was laughing with the staff today. I go, she kept begging me to come back to the regional school. I said, you better be careful what you ask for, because now she's back and now she's the uh, acting principal there. So um, it was a great opportunity, I think, to really, as I was saying uh, to Chairman Stevenson and um, Mr. Locke before, you don't know what it feels like to actually sit in the seat of a building principal until you're actually in it. You can think you understand it. You can think you understand the stress. But until you're actually there, you don't know. Um, and so I, I think it was a great opportunity for her to um, get her feet wet at Woodland School. So she actually knows what it feels like to sit in that seat. And um, the fact that she's willing to um, take on that challenge, I appreciate. And I think she'll do a great job. I think, you know, you have a great staff here. I think that you all represent the uh, school district well. Good and well. Um, I'm hoping the shorter fills your shoes and the, the uh, commencement speech. Um, <laughs> I look forward to that every year. And I'll get I, 
you know, but I, you know, I, I sit and listen to Joe, you know, very eloquent. He, he you give a good one, one every year. So, yeah, I, yeah. So, so, so you know, but honestly, congrats to, you know. Understand. <laughs> there we go. Play drugs a little bit. <laughs> no, no. Honestly, congrats. You know, I I welcome the change, and I again, you know, I think this is a, a a great school district, and I'm proud to call it one of mine. So, congrats. so I think just from a technical perspective, what Jen would be, we wouldn't obviously have anything to do with the principal, but I think it's the same setup where where. Mr. Shorter is going to be the interim principal of the high school. Mm -hmm. Everything goes well. Jen has then has the ability to appoint that position. So we would not necessarily need to do a search for a principal. We would, if everything goes according to plan, we would need to open up a vice principal position yes. at the end of the year. So then we could do that. All right. So what are you handing off to me? No, I, I just, or that was okay. Yeah, All right, I'm like that. Don't look like anything. Yeah. From my from my end, I guess it, over the last couple of weeks, I've been working very closely with Superintendent Willard, Mr. Tremell, and Ed, and I sort of about the budget. I have to commend both of them for the effort and the work, the extra work that they've done to get us where we are. They jumped right into it. They didn't give it a second thought. They were in here on the weekends. They were trying to figure out where we were. Um, I am very confident that from a budget perspective, we're going to be in good shape. You know, where our numbers are, we know where our finances are. Um, it's going to be a, a challenge and a difficult year. We've got some, we'll go over here in a second, but we've got some costs that are really out of our control that are driving the excess in the budget this year. Um, no fault of anybody. No, it's just that's where the numbers are. So I don't think we're going to run into hopefully major issues when we're having discussions with the town. I've already had preliminary conversations with some of the selectmen in Southwick, so they're aware of this. We've got a meeting coming up on the 25th, but we'll be able to explain that to them in much more detail. Um, obviously, as we get closer to budget season and the town meetings and going to every one of those, I'm going to make sure that I'll be all three of them this year. Um, so, Joan. Jen and I will be, we'll be at all of them. So hopefully we'll be able to answer everybody's questions. Um, but from my perspective, I think Mr. Trammell would be a perfect person to be in this position. Um, he certainly put forth the effort at this point to show that he's very dedicated to do this without even being a spot. So from that end, you want to go, you want to jump into your exciting yeah. part of the meeting? Okay. Yes. So because I was a teacher, I, I like to tell the budget, not through just numbers, but like through a story. Um, so this year's story was kind of like a Grimm's fairy tale. <laughs> um, it kind of is what it is. Um, I'm just going to take a pen copy. I have one I'm it for myself. Sure. Sure. So this year's story was kind of like a, a mini draft of um, what the I'm going to do for the big public presentation. Um, the beautiful thing about being able here um, was that I was really able to. Sorry, no, no, we're, okay. Aaron's working. Was really I was able to just kind of see where everything is in the budget, how the budget works, what makes up the budget. Um, I always knew we had grants. Um, I didn't really understand how the grants worked, what went into the grants. I just um, knew we put some people in there and everything. I knew we had the Easter money and I knew we had a plan for Easter. So I'm going to um, start off with um, yesterday and I'm going to go work backwards with my stories. So yesterday we had a meeting to kind of get an idea of where we are this year in order to help plan for next year. So we know right now that we need a new network in our school district. It's very, very costly. Um, we need to do um, all of our access points or the majority of our access points to the tune of about $400,000 need to be replaced. And we need to do some network connections to about the tune of another $200,000. 
So we're looking at about a $600,000 um, network um, redo in our district in order for all of our um, computers and our one-to-one -one initiatives and everything to work. They're at the end of their life. They, they've been here over 10 years. Um, it, it, it's time. So when we started uh, yesterday, the four of us, was, uh, Mr. Tremell, um, and the, Dr. Sullivan, myself, and Mrs. Gunn, we were sitting there, we were kind of looking and trying to figure out a way that where we could not put the expense of this network on the taxpayers, but figure out a way to use a lot of our ESER money in order to pay for the majority of it. So when we were doing that, we had this great plan, it's like written over there on the wall, um, had this great plan all worked out. But then as I was going through later in the day, we found out when we got to special ed and the school choice revolving account, um, we did not, we have sent some students out of district this year that have needed to go out of district. It's, it's, it's just the children who we have, um, but we didn't have enough money in the budget for that. So then we had to go to a plan B with our budget. We had to figure out how are we going to pay for our vocational tuitions that were covered in the budget, but we had a significant, about a $250,000 overage in special education out of district tuitions. So with that said, we scrapped everything and we started over with plan A. So I'm going to have you take out those um, STGR drafts that I just gave you. The, budget presentation that I gave you. And I'm going to start by telling the story. So the story for next year is we have $600,000 in network that we must do in order to make our district um, network work. It's a must do, it's not optional. Um, if you look at the first slide um, under STGR drafts, it shows our out of district vocational tuitions. And I did it over a history for you so you can see um, where we were in FY19 and now where we are in FY24. The good news is in FY24, this is worst case scenario that I have. As of right now, there are three extra uh, people put into that 44. Um, it, it was four extra, but I did get one today. This was the worst case scenario. So there is the potential that I could remove three people to the tune of $60,000 um later this month out of that number but i wanted to give you worst case scenario okay and if you look at the trends you can see that southwick was sending lots and lots of people out and then all of a sudden it's starting to shift and more and more and more students from the granville the town of granville are going out of district um it's, it's disproportionate to the number of students that they have coming to our district to going yeah, out of call, district. They don't call it one. So oh. the, the third bar in it's, each FY oh. is grand middle. Right. The middle Sorry. one is following. Sorry. So then if you go to the next page, we're going to look at out of district vocational costs. So you can see in FY19 where we were, and then you can look at where we're going to be in FY24. We're at $914,000 in out of district vocational costs. That's not something that I can not pay. It's not something that I can tell people they can't go by law. If we do not offer a program at our CTEC, they are entitled to go to either Westfield Technical Academy or to Smith. Yes. So my question, and I don't know if you have these numbers, um, but if you could get them, if you don't have them for me. So my question is approximately per pupil cost for CTEC versus Westville Technical Academy and Smithville and Smith Vogue. I can. Well, the numbers for this, if you take the 914 and divide it by the 44, these for each kid, it costs $20,789. That's what it's costing us per child to send them out of district. CTEC's obviously lower than that. Right. Now, was that included in this? No. no so this is just one I, can, up, right? I can exactly tell you where CTEC is. So what CTEC does, CTEC takes our average over three years, and it gives us a cost. 
but because they have students who come from not one of our seven communities, we get a break. So we have this year, our average number of students at CTEC is 58, and we are paying 929,000 for 58 children. So that's 16,017. So it's 4,000 and a bit less. $4,050. But the less. issue really is the numbers because we got 58 yeah. going to CTEC and 44 going elsewhere. Right. And, and yes. the interesting thing on the numbers, which is what Superintendent Willard was talking about, is it's, I don't think when the, the towns put the regional agreement together, did they necessarily think about this? Because you've got 80 some percent, 80 what percent of the kids coming from Seswick? 83, 84 yeah. percent. In that area, 21 kids out of those 83 percent are going out of district. We've got 21 kids from Granville out of 12 percent going out of district. Obviously, if we looked at that on a graph from a proportionality perspective, there's a huge disproportionality of usage on there. How the towns address that, don't know. But that, that may be something that the three of them have to get together and go, okay, how, how do we deal with this? Do we, do we just look at it over the next couple of years and see how it goes? Is it a trend? Is this something that's going to happen all the time? I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because the, these numbers keep going up. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it's an interesting little so situation. I think what we need to look at is what are the programs I have all that, that they're too. going to, mm -hmm. um, that are not offered at CTEC yep. and is there a push toward getting those programs either in CTEC or in our pathways mm -hmm. programs? And I because I think that's yeah. one way to to remedy the problem. Um, I think that mm -hmm. first of all, the, the problem though needs to be identified and communicated. Yeah. Right. And, and I just want to be clear: a lot of our kids, believe it or not, get into aviation, a lot of them are in collision, um, plumbing electrical, um, uh, yeah, animal assuming, science. I'm assuming agriculture. Yes. I mean, those are yeah. ones that I don't yeah. think anybody's going to have Can't, the finances yeah. to actually go and replicate that. Approach. Right. Yeah. Or the plumbing or the electrical. Um, the one that, that Joe's really looking at is the uh, programming and web development. That would be a big one that if we could get that innovative pathway, we could bring some of our kids here. But yes, we do have every single one program that our kids are going to. Um, the next one is uh, the special ed out of district costs. Um, it's the second slide. Um, if you look at FY23, this is the problem that I was telling you that we realized yesterday morning. Um, so correctly budgeted was 535,000. That's where we were um, last year when we were preparing our budget. Over the course of the year, we are at $768,000. So if you look at that, that is a significant increase of money that we had to come up with this year. And then next year, because you all know about the 14% increase in costs that we talked about, plus we have some additional kids coming in, plus, so we're not in the situation that we are in this year. Um, I did build in. Um, out of school choice, so it's not calling costing the taxpayers any money, a little bit of a cushion. So in case we have children who do go out of district next year, we won't be caught in the situation we are this year where we don't have the money for it. And if we don't use it, it still stays in school choice revolving. It does not cost taxpayers any money. Um, but if you look at the increase between the special ed out of district costs and the vocational out of district cost, it's $609,000 in one year. That's $75,000 more than what we're getting in required local contribution. I just think about that. Those are two fixed costs and they're already $75,000 more than the required local contribution. So a concern of mine also is the age of the students mm -hmm. that are requiring the out of district placement mm -hmm. because Am I correct that they're going to continue to require it as they age through the programs? So, so it's not, 
that this will be a continued increased cost in the future. So that was a discussion we actually had. Um, one of the ones that we um, sent out this year, um, Aaron, Robin, and myself, we spoke today, our hope, it was in the next year or two, um, we can either create a program here in district um, and get him back, um, but our hope is to get him back. Another one, I, I don't know, but I don't know. Um, the good news is that we have created some special education programs in our district. So although they do come at a cost, um, we created the social emotional program at Powder Mill School. So the cost to the district is 104,000, um, but the out of district cost, if we sent the students out would have been $189,000. Uh, the social emotional program at Woodland School, the cost of that program is 150,000. But if we sent the students out, it would be 200,000. And the program for children with autism costs us $149,000 to run. But if we looked at the out of district costs, that's 450,000. I can tell you, we are going to have to create a program for children with autism in the next few years at Powder Mill School, um, because the, the children who are in this program are going to be moving their way through and they are eventually going to be coming to Powder Mill School. So right now on this slide where it says program for children with autism, that's at Woodland? Yes. Sorry, I should have had that written in there, I'm sorry. It's at Woodland, yes. Yes, and that's where we hope when we develop that program that there's a chance that we can um, bring a student or two back. Um, my next slide that I wanted to show you is the net school spending ranking by district. So when this year I am going to have to come in, and not I, but we are going to have to come in and ask for some discretionary line item spendings because there's nothing that I can do. Um, what, what I want everybody to see is that we are the third from the bottom where if you see that three, we're at 103. There's those eight school districts that are below us that actually spend less in net school spending than we do um, in our school district. The other school districts spend more in net school spending. So we bring forward a very, very conservative budget. I will also be honest, I did take out all the technical regional schools because they're their own beast and it's not really comparing apples to apples. So I, I did take them out, but that is a live link. Um, the district NS profiles that you can click on um, on the DESE website. Pam, do you, does that make sense with her? It's just hard for me to see because it's so yeah, no, I So what she did is she looked at all the schools. So we only spend 103% hmm. of the net school spending. So we're only 3% over what we're obligated to do from the state mm -hmm. anyway, between chapter seven and then the local contribution. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to the taxpayers for 3% more than what they budget forcefully act, act, advocates anyway. That is so low on the district side. When you look at this throughout the entire state of Massachusetts, there are some up there that are, there's 13 school, 15 school districts that are above 212% mm -hmm. of net school spending. So we are certainly on the lower end. Obviously, you add, I don't know what that number is going to come up to, but we're going to be adding to that. So we'll be. So we'll, we're that number three. So there's two yeah. number threes. I was looking at the wrong number. Well, there's a number three on the right side. I'm assuming the three three, three, three schools. schools. So yeah, we're yeah. one of those three. three schools. Yes. So there's only eight schools below us Got in, it. in the entire, Got it. That's in the entire state. I see. Yes. Okay. I'm assuming we're going to move up that ladder we this will. year with what we're faced with. But I'm assuming. That so every may. school is right. going to run into this exact same oh, problem. Absolutely. Like everybody's going to get hit with this. Yes, this is not just an us issue yeah. this year. So if you go to the um, next page, the required local contributions, um, I just want you to see that um, they did, that is where we went up. We went up 524000 But again, like I told you, just our out of district tu tuitions are 609000 So we can't even cover the fixed costs for that. So when I'm gonna present the budget to you now, the highlights to the budget are that we did have created three in-district special education programs. Um, we do have a plan for the network upgrade that I'm going to go over in a minute. Um, we are slowly and quickly going through our E&D funds and our school choice funds. So we cannot keep using, we, 
we're using a million fifty five to offset our school budget this year when we're only bringing in six hundred and thirty three thousand. You, you can't keep operating like that with school choice. It's, go, it's going to be gone. Um, and that's only going to have a greater impact on the taxpayers. Um, we had, do have a significant increase in our out of district vocational tuitions. We have a significant increase to our special education out of district tuitions. And believe it or not, this budget that we're bringing forward has 5.6 FTE positions cut from the previous year's budget. 5.6. We did add one position, which was the systems coordinator this year, but 5.6 um, unit A positions have been cut from this budget. Um, sorry, this slide doesn't go with everything else. Um, it's it's from what, something else. But um, so the ESER, <laughs> ESER capital costs. So I want to let you know that in this year's budget, we are putting in um, 1.4 million. 1.411612. What where is that coming from? I'm going to give you these in a minute. Um, we did have four positions in our budget. Um, from putting into ESER, we after with the special ed situation that we had yesterday and figuring out the network issue, we had to increase it to two more positions in the ESER budget. Um, we do have the HVAC upgrade because of um Inflation, we have gone, we had it at about 500,000, but after talking with the supervisor of buildings and grounds, Eric Wykander, we have to keep it somewhere between five and 700,000. Um, so Eric is working on getting an RFP um, that meets the federal procurement laws, because when you use federal money, you have very specific um, procurement laws we have to follow. The network access points, um, our 300,000 and um, our IT director, Garley Green, is working on an RFP to meet the federal procurement laws for that. So we plan on using um, the majority of our ESER money um, on capital costs that we will not have to put on our taxpayers to between 800,000 and a million dollars in so capital costs. Is this the last year of ESER? It is. So what happens to those six positions next year? That is another great question. Two of those positions um, are going to be eliminated. They were interventionist positions that we put in due to the acceleration roadmap. Um, the other four we are going to have to put into the budget next year. And the other four are they? I know some of them are special education program um, positions. No, are they all four special four education four positions? The 504 coordinator will have to go back. Yep. There's two special ed positions that have to go back. Three special ed positions. Three special ed and two interventionists that will have to go back. Um, the capital costs. Um, I do have to switch this slide um, because uh, it, it's actually three hundred thousand. I'm going to have to ask for because it wasn't until late in the day, and I wasn't going to redo it because it was in color, and I didn't want to waste picking. <laughs> but the network upgrade um, is actually going to have to be a hundred and fifty thousand for the access points because it's three hundred thousand plus a hundred and fifty thousand for the access points. Um, a grounds utility truck for sixty-five thousand, a maintenance van for forty-five thousand, and to replace the flooring in the PMS stairwells and add UV window films to protect the new flooring, forty thousand. So that is where we are. What are we doing? Window films to protect the flooring. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> the current flooring is damaged. By it's a, a fishbowl. Oh, floor ceiling glass in there. Oh, okay. I don't have my ESER two. Out of ESER two monies, we are going to be doing um, the. We're offsetting two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars from the out of district special ed tuitions that we went over. Yeah, we're going to install the vaping sensors for thirty-five thousand dollars, seven hundred fourteen dollars, and we'll do the part of the course switch replacement portion of the Wi-Fi network for one hundred seventy-four thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars. So we're spending the majority of our money on 
those out of district costs that we did, weren't expecting, and the rest is actually really going to capital, um, which is all a benefit to our taxpayers because we will not have to come to them for this capital in the future. And we need to get this network up and working for next year. Um, and it's, it's a big job. So here is um, the budget sheets. I think that's an important point that the taxpayers understand is how much of the extra funding is going towards capital mm -hmm. because of the compounded interest that the towns end up paying on those capital over the years. Mm -hmm. It should be doubled. Is it doubled? Yeah. I'd say I'd say we bought a printer instead. So we could save on staples. 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 So I thought we did try and print in color. I apologize for that. I don't know how it happened. Yeah, but no same No, no scratch. Scratch. I denied the stapler request. I like the crimping. I think that's awesome. It does come on crimp pretty decently. Here is the gentle, the ugly of the budget. So that's the story that I just told you. Now these are the numbers that go with the story. You have it? No, I've got it. But you don't have I know. I don't know why. You have to make yourself bigger. bigger. Okay. Um, so the total operating budget this year is twenty-seven um, million eight hundred sixty-two thousand eight hundred ninety-five dollars. That is what we are going to be asking the towns for. However, I want to make it very clear that we are also offsetting the budget again with 110,000 in rural school aid that is going strictly to out of district vocational tuitions. We have um, uh, 1,055,000 that is going to be going to 695,000 to out of district sped tuitions and $359,736 to vocational out of district tuitions. We have 110,000 from the circuit breaker revolving that is going towards the special um, ed uh, out of district tuitions. So all of our out of district special ed tuitions in this upcoming year are once again being funded out of that 892,000 is being paid out of circuit breaker and school choice revolving. There is one line item for 175,000 that is embedded in the budget, and that's for our programs at um, Lord Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative. Um, the $1,411,000, those are those capital projects I told you about in those six addition, those six teaching positions. And then um, the grants for the IDA, the MECO grants, the Title uh, 4A, Title 2A, and the Title 1. Those are all additional funds that are we are offsetting the budget by. I am going to ask for these back. I will pass them out to you now so you can see. I just have people's names on them and I do want to shred them when I leave. Um, but I just want, if you want to look at um, their packets of three, you can just set, turn them around. I, I do want these back though at the end um, because you can see the cost of them. I think uh, FinCom's already seen them. Um, but I want you to be able to see what it is that we're spending and um, that we are actually doing what we feel is fiscally responsible to. We know this is a tough budget. We know that if you turn to the next page, that we are still going to have to be asking for a $529,000 discretionary line item for Southwick, an $18,000 discretionary for Tallinn, and a $76,000 for uh, Granville. Where is it? We're under assessments number five, line 24. Sorry. Oh, the one above the yellow line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are what we call a discretionary. Everything else is non discretionary. Um, again, this is draft. So I did upgrade from the cherry sheet. The cherry sheet that we got from the uh, governor 
only had 600 and um, uh, 728,870 in for um, transportation reimbursement. It did up that to 800,000. Pretty confident um, that under on the assessment page, we're going to be able to get at least 800,000. Um, I appropriated 875 for E and D. We do have some flexibility in E and D um, to add a little bit more if the school committee so chooses to do so. Um, there is the potential um, that um, we have those three additional uh, students who can come off the vocational tuitions and that would save us about $60,000. So what I'm presenting to you tonight is the worst possible case scenario going forward. So, um, <laughs> I'm trying to be as honest as I can and tell you the story and this is who we are and this is where we live. And these are the kids that are coming to us now. These are the schools that they want to go to. Um, before it was always college prep, college prep. A lot of our kids now are really going in um, to the world of uh, trades. And uh, I wish my kids were going to electrical and plumbing. I mean, I think about those jobs and how hard it is to find an electrician or a plumber. I'm glad to see that we have students going into these fields. Um, uh, as we know, there's always the chance that um, this, uh, the, the uh, legislator could come up. Right now, we're only at $30 per student. There's a chance that they could go up to $60 per student. That would give us an additional $38,000 in our budget. There's somebody out there who's um, promoting more money in rural school aid. There's potentially some more money, um, but we wouldn't know that until after our budget is passed, but that would save money in our school choice and our E&D, so it would help us next year in our budget when we have to add those teachers back. So, I mean, it's not going to help us this year, but it's a good way to think about planning for next year. So Jen, I have a question. I hope um, I have an answer. Well, I, we keep hearing, like in the news, anecdotally, mm -hmm. that the governor's budget is so school friendly and blah 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 blah. So why? What what is it that's so school friendly about her budget? Okay, that is an absolutely great, 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 great point. So it is. She's she has passed a budget that is almost to like year six out of year seven or something out of the Student Opportunity Act. We are hold harmless. No matter how many additional, so they give you additional money for students um, that are ELL. They give you additional money for students who are at the poverty level. They give you more money for students who go and attend vocational schools. However, because we're in hold harmless, we're already, they're giving us $4 million more than what we should be getting. So say we should have gone up another hundred and a million dollars the government's like, we're not giving you another million dollars. You've already got $4 million. So until, until we are out of the hold harmless situation, the only money, the only money we will ever see from the federal government is that 30, is the money per pupil. What we need to advocate for is regional transportation. She's saying she's funding it at 90%. Well, that money, that amount of money and that is right there is not 90 percent i bumped it up because i'm pretty confident we need to see regional transportation being reimbursed we need to see circuit breaker being fully funded we need to continue to see the free meals and we need to continue to see um rural school aid being funded at the level in which it needs to be funded because we were just talking last week we had a meeting with our legislators and we were saying it is more expensive to run smaller school districts than it is to run larger school districts but it's, we can't do all the programming that you can do in a larger district. We have kids who are one off here, one off here. We can't create a program for that. So we have to send them out. We had, we lost 20 kids this year, but we didn't lose them in one grade. We lost a little bit here, 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 here. We can't just go cutting teachers. So it is so difficult to be running a rural school district right now with these declining enrollments who are in hold harmless. Um, I wish I had the information I actually talked to um, Senator Boldiga, my phone on me either, Representative, Representative Boldiga, and um, I gave him some talking points. Um, and I think it's 7% 
um, seven percent of us. I'll get. I'll get. I can actually get my computer if we take a break in a minute, and I'll get you the numbers. You would be shocked to know the number of. Actually, can you give me a minute so I can get that fact for you? Because I think you will find it extremely fascinating about the SOA. It answers your question. So, and I have a follow up question. Okay. And I ask this every year. I know, but okay, it, it's my brain. Full harmless. What the heck is that <laughs> again? Thank you okay. for all. I know. <laughs> I was going to say it. All right. I'm going to explain that. So the way that they got this set up from a Chapter 70 reimbursement perspective, we're supposed to be able to get X amount of dollars for X amount of kids. Yes. What they're saying is the whole harmless says that we will never, from the state of Massachusetts, give you less money than what we gave you the year before. So from a budget perspective, you don't have to worry about the amount of money that the state giving us going down. It only ever goes up. So what was the jackpot year? How long have we well, been in a hold harmless? Well, a long time. Oh, wow. So what's happened is we got all this extra money, right? And then every year it keeps getting more because the 30 some dollars that we get, we got that last year. So it keeps going up. And what happens is if our, our attendance has been going down, which means that technically, if we look at the per pupil amount, we should be getting less. Can't get less because the state holds us harmless. So that gap keeps getting bigger. So that's what Jen was talking about. There is a four million dollar difference right now in the money that we get from Chapter Seven, based on what we should get if somebody started with a clean slate and said, "Sounds like Colin Granville has X amount of kids; they get X amount of money." Well, that amount is four million below what we actually get. So if we were to make that up, we'd have to go to the taxpayers and say, we're if we want to be able to run operations the way we ran it last year, we're $4 million short. So that's the hold harmless. All it means is that we're not, they're not going to pay us less than what they paid us the year before. And on top of that, they're giving us $30 a kid more this year than they did last year. So if we're in hold harmless, how many districts across the state are in hold A lot. So listen to this fact, okay? It says over 71%, 418.8 million of all the new chapter 70 money is going to 32, 10% of all the districts in the common area. Yeah, that was me. Almost 93%, 544.8 million of all new chapter 70 money is going to 106 or 33% of the districts in the Commonwealth. 212 or 67% of all districts in the Commonwealth are left sharing only a total combined 7%, 41.5 million of all new chapter 70 money. And we're so zero. I think that might be important thousand. information to <laughs> add to this and share with the towns um, because they are probably, the townspeople are probably getting the limited source of information that about, you know, oh, this, the governor's money is so school friendly. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's why regional transportation, that can benefit us. Circuit breaker, that can benefit us. Um, but uh, a circuit breaker, that's not Minichaw, right? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Circuit breaker is, and I'm sure uh, Ms. Gunn can explain it way better than me. It's after you spend, you can explain it better than Yeah, so, so circuit breaker is uh, for special education and costs over the foundation, which is about 46000 per child. So if we have, for example, uh, a tuition that is at 100000 to use a round number, um, we can use, there's a whole system that we have to go through. So we say, okay, we spent 38,000, whatever, beyond what the foundation was, they will then give us back 75% of that. So it's meant to help schools who have these, these large out of district expenses. It's like meeting your deductible in your health insurance and you go over it and they're, and they're reimbursing you at 75%. That's exactly what it is. And if you look at it, we used that. So the year before was 85,000. Last year, we got 110,000 for Circuit Breaker. We use it every year to offset some of our other outgoing. Um, so it's like an insurance policy kicking in. Yeah. Any extra money that we pay above a certain amount, they'll reimburse us 75% of that money. 
And as Jen was saying, yes, and as Jen was saying, at this point, transportation is not included. Um, I was on a call yesterday where they were saying that I think they're going to phase in the transportation over the next three years. Um, so, so transportation for special education, for special right? Education for health health. Health. Yes. Um, that doesn't go through LPVAC or that does? No. Yes, our transportation, oh, yeah. it does, but we don't get any break money that we would get them. Right. Break the government. If it goes into the circuit breaker account, accounts, they start accounting for it in there, that we'd be able to get 75% of that above anybody that goes over. Mm -hmm. We'd be able to account for that. So that would help. I have everybody here. If you have any questions, I'm building it in grounds. We did add a little bit extra into, um, I did mostly do a level service. Um, I did speak with Eric Wykander. Um, he made a really good point and it's a little, it's a little bit now, but for every dollar we spend now, we save $5 later in preventative maintenance. So I think we added like $36,000 to the budget for preventative maintenance. Um, and um, I think that's a wise use of our money. And I don't feel like it's being frivolous. I think that that little bit of preventative maintenance now will go a long way instead of having a huge capital expense later. Um, I have uh, Garland Green, our IT director here. Um, he's been doing huge amounts of research to figure out why our internet and our network connection is not working right up at the regional school. If you have any questions here, Robin is here um, to answer any questions on the special education and our building principals in here and Jenny Sullivan is, is here to answer if you have any um, curriculum or any other questions. I got a question for Garland on the, on the network upgrade. We've got this broken down to network upgrade and access points. Are these basically being in yet? If we need one without, can we have one without the other? No, or do we need yeah. them both? I'll stand to get. First of all, the access points, let's we'll take a look at those. Those are the actual radios that we get connect to. Um, 70, uh, 79%, say 80% of all of those go out of life uh, on December 30th, which means there's no possible way I can't upgrade them. I can't put anything to them. Um, so those connect to a broader network. They connect to our switching network, which is also connected to our fiber network. Yeah, that network itself, our main core switch is, is 20 years old. Yeah. So what we've done, and, and and first of all, I want to commend you. You've gotten as much as you can. You cannot milk this thing anymore. <laughs> right? In the meantime, what we've done is we've added more machines, more machines using a different radio frequency, which means they can download more information at a faster cost, we completely tapped it out. So you can't just do one. I've looked into that. I've really, really have to see what I can do. We're still waiting to determine whether or not we can get away with using our pre-existing fiber. At first, I was not at all, I didn't feel very comfortable with that. It's 20 year old fiber. Yeah. Um, however, after having enough conversations and things like this, Cautiously optimistic that we can we can repurpose that and we shouldn't have any issues. And if we do, we have some money built in this budget that we can repair that. Okay. So the good part of this is, is that we will have a network that can meet the needs, certainly within the next five years. Because every time a new model comes out, it comes out with a new speeds, a new opportunity to consume more and more bandwidth. Right. So we're going to get there, right? The next question that we'll ask ourselves is once we get the new car smell in here and everything's work, working great then what, right? What are our next steps on the pedagogical side of things, right? Because we're going to have a brand new network and it's going to be smoked hot. Yeah. And we don't want it to be all about downloading YouTube videos. We want to be able to put it to work on a pedagogical sense. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, you can't. It's just not, just not possible. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes. Yeah. The only thing I'm worried about is we're, I don't think we're bringing the budget forward to the towns that is got fluff in it at all. But the towns, obviously through the elections, have the or the town meetings have the ability to either thumbs up or thumbs down these budgets. If they thumb them down, they're expecting us to go back and take a look at this and tighten it up. The only worry that I've got is having these capital pieces in the school budget. Because we they take separate votes on the school budget and the capital cost. If that 
we've got three hundred thousand dollars sitting in that network access that we're that we're doing to with ether. They don't have to approve that. That's that's us. What do you mean they don't have to approve it? That's us using our ether funds for that. Doesn't matter. It's in our budget. If they if they can thumbs up or thumbs down the budget. And if the budget get, if the budget yeah, but get, it's if, if it's not used by ESER, it's going to go into capital expense, no, and, and they're going to have a harder pill swallowing that one. Well, it, the the only thing I'm worried about is if let's say it goes through, and our capital right now is two hundred thousand, and the towns go okay, fine, we'll accept the capital. Well, if they say no to the overall budget. We've got to go take a look at it. We can leave it in Easter. That's fine. But we're going to have to find money to drop it down somewhere else. And that's going to either be on the educational side, on teach somewhere. They're going to be looking for us to cut costs. That's the only danger if putting capital equipment purchases in that major budget. Because if Garland gets the network upgrade for 150000 but we don't get approved for the, for the access point and we need it, then that's got to be in there. We can't, we can't cut it. But rather the opposite is what happens. Historically, they the approved the school budget. Exactly. Okay. No, that's fine. And I just I want to be up front with everybody. That's right. the danger. I believe that in in terms of the regional agreement with regard to the budget and the capital, we got two yeah. different thresholds of right. approval. Two, for, two for the regular budget, three for the capital. Exactly. Yeah. And and so I, my concern is more the opposite. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, so on here, on our capital side, we've got a network upgrade that's going to be 150, not 50, right? Yeah, 150, yeah. Okay. So we've got the utility truck for 65 grand. We've got a maintenance van for 45,000. How on the scale of one to 10, Eric, are those are those trucks? So we spent over $15,000 maintaining those two vehicles in the last calendar year. Okay. Uh, one of them is 20 years old. The other is uh, 16. And uh, I'm going to have to take one of them off the road pretty soon. Okay. Uh, I don't think that we can absorb any more costs. So when this we, is something I brought to the committee five times. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I just that I just want kind everybody of, to have all the info. that kind of info mm -hmm. when we go to the towns and we explain to them what's in this capital budget. That kind of detail I think needs to be included so that they know why we're putting it on there. Because if they look at this and go, "Oh, three hundred fifty thousand, fine," no, we're not going to approve it. Cut it down. Well, I don't know what you want to cut off. I mean, if we need the hundred fifty thousand for that, because we, if we get the access points and we don't get the 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 network upgrade, it's useless, <clears> right? If you can't, you, you need both. The data's got to run, right? Exactly. It's like putting gas in the car and then taking the wheel off the car. That's right. Then full time. Okay. Then again. So now the flooring. I mean, we're looking at forty thousand out of this. We've got to replace it. In my opinion, it's. Time to replace. Yes. Okay. Right. And then we've got to put the we've got to put the you put, if you like. No, no, it's, it's here. It's here. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. the same flooring as when I was here. I don't know. No, well, it's it's not it's the same flooring. But that the house so is considered being in the house. The house is only not necessarily friendly. Sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, look. I have no problem going to war for the network upgrade, the utility truck, the maintenance van. I mean, we've got all the data. We're great. What's the what's the what's the we better have this or would it be helpful if we were to provide a narrative for the justification? I think that to probably would be helpful. Yeah. So I can certainly do that. Okay. That I think any we don't need voluminous info. I mean, but something from a taxpayer's perspective, if they're looking at this capital equipment or, or the capital request. Here's what we need. Here's why we need it. Here's what happens if you don't approve it. That way, it makes it a lot easier for them to go look at it. And go, okay, I may not like this, but how do I not vote for it? Because it's needed. Because if we don't justify it, if they're going to be looking at, I mean, looking at something, if they're if they're going to be getting a bill, yeah. we're looking for a question of yep. look, five hundred and twenty nine thousand yep. dollars for for discretionary spending on the school on the school budget. And another three, whatever, 85% of 300, let's say another $250,000 for capital that Southwick's got to pay. Any extra detail we've got that is going to justify why it needs to get done, I don't think it's going to be a waste of time. Happy to do so. Anticipating some questions with regard to technology. 
Yeah. If they could come to the annual town meetings, it would be so super helpful. Oh, yeah. Um, Do you have the breakdown with the engineer for PSA? Yes, I have them right here. I, mean, I that's have my everything. background. I, I didn't, you know, did not look at that. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, um, I think um, over the next week, I'll probably be able to shave off another $100,000. So I'm thinking that, you know, every Southwick is probably going to be looking at like a 429 instead of a 529. I'm hoping I can do that. Um, but in draft number one, I just want to make sure that I put all the vocational tuitions in that are potentially in there. Um, I have not offset anything yet um, with Jenny's MECO grant for transportation. And we still have a very hefty E&D. Um, that we can probably add another fifty thousand dollars to. Um, That's like putting a leap though, because that E and D that, that we've been very lucky. We have with that E and D coming in, and, and basically, if anybody doesn't have an, that E and D fund, is if we do a good job on the budget, there's excess money. That money goes into the E and D fund. Now, as you tighten up a budget. And you become more conservative with that budget and you try to live to that budget, there's less and less access to the budget, which means there's less money that goes in E and D. So it's there. We can use extra, but I don't know whether now typically, at least the last two years that I've been involved with this, we've been moving three quarters of a million to yes. more than that amount of money from E and D. Well, as you tighten up the budget, I don't know where they're going to find three quarters of a million dollars. That is going to flow back into that EMD for next year. So that means Absolutely that goes correct. down where next year we may not have $850,000 that we can put into EMD. We may only have $400,000 mm -hmm. that we can put into EMD. So it, it becomes a right. Now, it doesn't mean anybody's like managing it. Nope. If anything, it's, it's you're managing it correctly and you're doing a good job. It's just as you get better at it, those EMD funds tend to. Kind of dry up a little bit. So I think we've got to be careful about that too. Yeah, we can throw it in there. Right. I don't know. I mean, you do it today, fine. It lowers this year, but next year it gets higher. So it, yes. it's a. Uh, I don't. Yeah, and that's why I put in here highlights of the budget. These are the final years of some significant yeah. offset with E and D and school choice funds because there it's a shrinking budget. It's, it's spending a million, taking in six thirty four. So why is school choice shrinking? We're not taking in fewer school choice students. We are because we've gone from six six classes down to five. So we can't just keep adding as many as um, we have in the past. We don't have as many as teachers to right. yeah. Okay. So the reason behind that though should be yes. But we're going to open some school choice seats tonight. So. And I spoke to a teacher today who's thrilled. So. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any other questions on the budget or the draft budget? I could just have the grants things back when you're done. But they have people to use that, and I don't like that. <laughs> I need to know it. Well done. Well done. Do that. Ryan shredded it. Ryan shredded it. Ryan shredded it. Because I went and like you can put it in the shredder. He's like. Uh, no, I heard him doing it. You did. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're done with the budget. Those of you that are thank you, everybody. The budget, you're released <laughs> for now. All right. Policies. Right? Are you done? Are we done? I'm done. Okay. First, you had to go with me. No, nope, we're done. Hi. Okay. Policies. So we have got EBAA. We brought this up in policy committee last week. Last week, but like yeah, yeah last week. Um, this is in front of you. We are looking tonight to waive the three readings. This is something that was brought to us or requested to us by the town site. Um, basically, Eric's here. If anybody's got any questions, to summarize this from a time perspective, they are just looking for us to be able to purchase more fuel efficient vehicles in the future if we can. Some of the vehicles that we have on site don't even qualify for this policy. Right, Eric, or is there you want to give a little bit more of a if, if, you, if it's permissible? Go for it quickly. Um, so this is a part of a larger initiative from the town of Southwark to become a green. Um, there's two two 
things that they're expecting from the committee. Uh, number one is this fuel efficient vehicles policy that you have in front of you. Um, the second thing is an energy reduction plan. Uh, we are to uh, review it as a committee. Uh, you, are, you are to review it as a committee and decide whether or not to adopt it. Um, it was just sent to me, the first draft of it on Friday. So it's not available for our discussion here. I, mean, I, I haven't worked with it. We can't get it on the agenda. I just want you to know what to expect. So there's, there's two asks from the town. Um, the first of them is this, and then the energy reduction plan. Both of them are um, they're very low impact. Um, it's 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 really a, a from a cost perspective, all of these measures are uh, are going to benefit the budget. There, these are these are cost savings measures. They're not um, they're not going to increase our expenses in the name of uh, being green. It's it's both uh, return on investment as well as um, conservation. So the, the policy that you have in front of you now um, is just laying out guidelines that the district will use going forward to purchase vehicles, which we don't really plan to do um, outside of the two utility vehicles that we mentioned earlier tonight. And both of those are exempt from this policy. Right. Because I remember the first that you brought this to us in you know, five months, so how does this even apply? So we do operate, um, uh, we operate four vehicles, a fleet of four vehicles currently. We have two um, regular standard minivans that we use, one for uh, transport of items between buildings, IT, food service, stuff like that. The food service department is operating another one in their endeavors to feed the folks over at St. Mary's. Um, so that's another vehicle we're operating, and then the two maintenance utility vehicles that are exempt. And the two that we um, are that are not exempt looks like it's an 08 and, and an 11. Correct. Um, and are they currently meeting the guidelines? Uh, they are. Uh, the 11 is, the 08 is right on the cusp. Um, <laughs> but we're not looking at needing to purchase any anytime soon, right? Uh, we, we believe that those vehicles will need to be replaced sometime in the next four to six years if the district decides to continue operating. These garages or are they stored outside? They're stored outside. What does the PMs on them? Um, we're in the process now of searching for uh, a vendor to do that. Uh, previously, we had our in-house garage and our in-house mechanic that did all of that work. But since the LP back uh, transition for transportation, it's been sort of on an as needed basis through various vendors. Two, two vendors here in town, uh, one of which is closed. So we're, we have, a, I don't have an answer for that currently. Is there like a wash schedule for you? Like, are they, is there a uh, clean machine column or you guys bring them to a car wash? We have a hose. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, that, I mean, something that sits outside is what is quite honestly. Yeah, no, and Leland, nothing lasts regardless. We don't, they don't see vehicles, don't see much salt. Um, three out of the four are really mainly operated on our, our campus. Yeah, they don't really leave. The, the fourth is going just over to St. Mary in the back. And as you know, when weather's terrible, we're, we're not open. So right. it doesn't see as much salt as like a fleet vehicle for a police department or, you know, city bus or something. So if they're not driven a ton, I mean, that's worse than driving them. The mileage high or no? No, the mileage on our vehicles is very, very low. I have a I have a twenty year old truck that has forty two thousand miles. <laughs> well, that, well, I mean, what I'm getting at is under utilization sometimes it's worse than over use because you know a vehicle that sits and is not driven, if it's not in a temperature controlled environment, on the garage. Do we have any? Room for, I don't want to add money to the budget ever, but even a, even a carport or something that we could, you know. Well, it's it's something to be considered. We, uh, we're, we, we're uh, anticipating. They the, parked on pavement or, or yes. they parked on? Yeah, uh, in a fenced in lot, lighted fenced in lot. Um, we have LPVEC vacating the premises. Their lease is up in June. Uh, we should be taking over the garage for maintenance and grounds use following that. It's a 5,000 square foot garage in three days. Um, we should be able to get some of our equipment inside. My priorities are the $160,000 agricultural tractor. Um, that needs to get inside. Oh, okay. But the other vehicles as well. 
So yeah, we, we will definitely do. Thanks. Sure. All right. Anybody got any questions on this? We're looking tonight. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have two votes. We're gonna wait the three readings because this is sort of out of sorts. Um, I didn't think we really needed three readings on this. Um, and then we're gonna vote to approve the policy. So. All right. Okay. Superintendent Willard, you're up. Move to approve appointment of interim director of finance and operations and chief procurement officer Joseph Tremel recommended. So moved. Second. Any questions or concerns? All right. Can I get a show of hands to accept the motion? Aaron, let the motion <laughs> so the motion passes seven oh, zero zero. <laughs> Let's say a non-voting member, Lucas, likes to vote. He 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 He likes to vote. He likes to vote. He likes to vote. He so second. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> like recent. We should have yeah, 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 yeah. something like this. Yeah. Just keep adding one. Like, just to see. Make one different. Right. Different one. Because all right. repetitive. Do the next one faster. Wait, wait, wait. Anybody have any I, questions I, or comments or? Can you say that again? That, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Um, can I get a show of hands to accept the motion? Aaron, let the record show the motion passed seven zero zero. She is going to have to read it again. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> policy E E B A A, policy E E B A A dash E, appendix A, recommended. So moved. Second. All right. Can I get a show of hands and set the motion? All right. Aaron, the record, let the record show the motion passes 700. Uh, move to approve the SRS program of studies 2023 2024 and exploration of a single grade 7 through 12 schedule, recommended. So moved. Second. Anybody got any questions on this? this yeah, is what we talked about last week. Um, okay. So I was the first class to actually get block scheduling from freshman year to senior year. Why did we ever go from <laughs> what used to be almost? Right. Anyone know? I mean, I realized that was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't why know why. I, I mean, I, like, what was this thought? Yeah, it did. Around it didn't. A block scheduling. I mean, it provides some some project based learning provides for the expanded time. Um, in the classes, I know I know some of the advantages for parents and students is that they have four classes at one time as right. opposed to six to eight. Right. I don't know the history of it. Um, I know Mr. Vincent brought it in. He was the principal at the I time, so he could probably right. give us the historical um, history of, of or the historical context of why it was brought into the place at that time. Um, well, I don't know if we have anyone up there still. You mean the semesters, right? Because it used to be. That was here then, right? It used, to, <laughs> it used, to, be, it used to have like school, like classes throughout the whole year, right? So before. Prior to. Oh, right. Right. Cool. Yeah, you had many years ago. Last for the you whole had, right, you had right. a class right. history. Yeah. Yeah. Days, classes, whatever. Yeah. That. You a study yeah. hall in there. Like, and normally people go, go to school. semesters because you right. get more flexibility, you get more opportunities, you get more classes. Because a lot of times you have step, and then you end up going to eight, so you get two yeah. more options. Yeah. Oh. And you had a study hall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you did not have a study hall when you had block study. Yeah. yeah. Which one? I it was. It was. I worked in a district at the time that made the same move and we went through years of you know selling it. At the time, it's important to remember that times were different twenty right. years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and the move for longer class periods was the push. And traditional schedules were for seven periods a day, forty five minutes or less. So the long block provided almost, you know, it provided almost twice that amount of time and, and the transition, you know, understanding how students learn, providing three transitions and you could do a video and a lesson the same day, or you could, you know, and project based labs. and all that. Labs. 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 Writing labs, labs and labs. science labs. Um, but as the pendulum has switched, shifted and student learning has shifted with, with the smartphone and attention spans and, and, all kinds of other needs that we have, we're looking back in another direction. But I don't think the direction is a seven period, 42 minute school day. It's probably, it's probably like 60 minute classes 
And somehow we got to figure out how we can do seven or eight classes, still get that in. So um, I think the, the number one thing is it was just a different time and the needs and the, the, the philosophies about education have shifted again 20 years later. And you guys are going to do a study and we're going to we're going to report will you back to figure out still be or will, the this, or will this now kind of shift to straight you know? yeah i mean well, kind of your uh, idea or you gonna <laughs> <be honest? laughs> i mean yeah i mean he'll, he'll go straight for you <laughs> It actually has been something that has been um, part of our tenure together for nine years. And I think when I first started, it was something that uh, the previous superintendent, Dr. Berry, wanted us to look at. And after about 18 months to two years, the school committee came back and didn't feel, they said they didn't want us to throw uh, the baby out with the bathwater and to change everything. And so we stuck with, we stuck with our current schedule. Uh, I proposed it again during COVID because I felt that there were some advantages to going full year as opposed to half year, and um, it just didn't get to the support at the building level that that it needed to move forward with that. So a lot of we've done a lot of work around this. We've done a lot of studying around different types of schedules, the benefits of some, um, but just you know what what Superintendent Willard is talking about with the budget, the enrollment. The shifts in uh, in student learning, the the data behind it, the science behind it, and what our students are getting into, it's all trending towards we need to do something different. Yeah. Um, and that coupled with us going from a seven to eight to nine through twelve, we've done our due diligence in trying to maintain the integrity of of the grade levels. Um, we just we, we feel like we're in a position where we need to move forward. So. Um, so to answer your question, I think Serena is in, in, in good position. Uh, board with it, but yeah, I mean, I think it's something that that will continue to. I'll continue to support it where where since, I'm asked to. Since it re since it requires and will involve budgetary yeah. kind of oversight, I think it may be a great way for the two departments to maybe collaborate. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Very <laughs> yeah. Then you can get with the assessments, right? Yeah. Then we can get rid of some other people there and save money. Oh, oh, nobody is right. A lot of you know, a little not to like beat a dead horse, but little things about keeping kids enrolled. You know, I grew up in Greenfield. Greenfield had. You know, an auto shop. We had wood. We had yeah. rafting. You know, I was able to take all those courses at Greenfield High, knowing that we don't have a mechanic any longer, but we have that facility. Is there any room for thought to maybe add a small engine program where, you know, say nine, ten, eleventh grade, you can take a shop class where you can learn how to build and rebuild a lawnmower engine, stuff like that. Like any yeah. sort of you know programs additional to what. A tech school might offer, but we could, you know, supplement here. So a couple of things. We actually went up to Smith Vocational um, because I wanted to bring in an electrical program to, to the school here. Um, it's something that I don't believe the Lower Pine Valley Collaborative is going to do tackle. Um, and I thought that this would be a great opportunity for our students and for the other schools in, in the supporting district. Um, it is a monumental endeavor to get plumbing and electrical into schools. Sure. One of the things I didn't realize is that there's actually a, almost like a non-compete clause. Uh, uh, I can't have a program within 10 miles of a school that already has that. Okay. So knowing that Westfield Tech Academy has that uh, vocation or uh, an electrical program, I can't I can't do it uh, here because it's in close proximity. The other thing that I wasn't aware of is that the endorsement of the electric electricians union and the plumbers unions, they are, you, you need to work very, very closely with them because obviously they're very uh, passionate about their their trade and right. you, you need to get their blessing. They don't want their field saturated. They don't want- That's actually something I was gonna recommend, not knowing now about the 10 mile radius, yeah. So, um, 
you know, the superintendent of, of this vocational school really thought we were on the right path and should put our focus towards the innovative pathways program that we have going forward. And he thought by making that uh, the priority with the internships that we have, it will help us with the graphics um, and the technology classes that we're sending kids to WTA for. Hopefully we see some growth in that over the next couple of years. But there is, there is opportunity and there is the potential to look at putting in some chapter 74 programs in the school. Uh, electrical and plumbing is not. Even light carpentry, you know? Yeah, I mean. Teaching yeah. You know, a kid a difference between an Allen wrench and a yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some programs that we could, we could look into. Okay. All right, let's take a vote on this motion. Can yes. we get a show of hands to accept the motion? Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 700. Move, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Move to approve, allowing for a consent agenda and section two routine moving forward recommended. So moved. What the heck does this mean? Thank you. I don't know. Okay. So, all right. So that's I'm reading. I'm like, wait a minute. So what we've been actually came up last summer at the uh, training course I went to for for uh, mask. There is a, an opportunity for something that we can use called the consent agenda. And what it is meant to do is basically a bucket of things that we just don't even have a conversation about, we never talk about, like, and things that are in the consent agenda for this meeting, fundraisers, um, the homeschool policies that we approve. Right now, any every one of those needs to get read aloud. We take a vote. And what we can do is put these all in sort of a consent bucket that they'll get sent out. Aaron will send them out in our, in our packet. Here's the items that are in the consent agenda for this meeting. That does not mean that if there is one of these, let's say there's a fundraiser that you as a school kid member want to find out answers on, what we do is when we get to the spot where you would approve the consent agenda, we make a motion to pull this one out of the consent agenda. If that happens, we then vote on that motion. That one gets pulled out, we hold it. We approve the consent agenda minus that one and then we then we put an approval for, we do an, uh, an action item for that one that got pulled out and then it gives us opportunity to talk about it. Can we just ask questions without having to pull it though? Uh, yeah, we can ask questions. It's just a question of, do we need the superintendent to read all of the things that are in there. If we have a question of, well, you know what? I don't know. Because if it's a consent agenda, it's going to be a voted on. Right. Yeah. If you want to ask questions on it, we've got to pull it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, for the almost two years I've been on the committee, the number of real questions that we, we haven't asked any on the homeschool things because we haven't been able to get any of those. And even on the, on the fundraisers, we look at it. I mean, we approve them. Um, if we don't want to do this, we don't have to do this. I was just trying to find a way to speed the meeting up, and these things kept coming up all the time. Does that make sense or no? Oh, who be easy does it, Erica? Yeah, correct. Yep. And it works well. Works fine. Yeah, because they're like they're Monday. And if you want to ask questions, you can ask questions outside of the actual meeting itself. You know, if you had a question or not, or yeah. whomever. Yeah, I mean, if you get if you get the the whole point of this is if you get the packet and you read it and you've got a question, you can shoot a question over to Jen or Aaron or somebody on Monday, get the answer back before the meeting, and then you don't have a question, and then we approve the consent agenda. Or if you want to pull it, you can pull it. Yeah, I mean, if there's something that we put in there, which I have a tough time believing there will be, but we put something in there that you really want to have a discussion on, when it gets to that point, Somebody makes a motion to pull this item out of the consent agenda. We vote on that. That gets pulled, and then it just becomes a new action item that we do on the fly. Sure. That makes sense? Okay, so this is to approve us doing consent agenda in Section 2 under routine. What we'll do is we take a quick vote to approve the consent agenda. It doesn't go under action items. So if we do have one that we want to pull out, that gets pulled out and gets added to the action item section of the agenda. Make sense? All right. So can I get a show of hands to approve this going into our schedule? All right, Aaron, let the record show this passes 700. Zero, zero. 
Um, <laughs> well, that kind of just well, the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just okay. Now we're just going to approve the consent. We're going to approve the consent agenda items as listed, recommended. So, okay. <laughs> if we're going to do this, we I feel like that's a good question, though. Okay. All right. Can I just show of hands to accept the motion? All right. Like motion passes seven zero zero. Move to approve additional school choice seats for the remainder of the 22-23 school year. Three seats in grade three, six seats in grade five, and one seat in grade eight recommended. So moved. Second. All right. So six seats in one grade. You have all, all those kids like moved out of district and then but they want to stay. We have six. Yeah, we've got six kids who want to um, come to, into grade five. I've already spoken with Mrs. Carrier about it. So get, did, where, what we want, there's a couple of things that have sort of come up on this. We've got, we, we've got kids during the year that move out of district, which technically opens up a seat. We don't want to really get into a point where we're doing this week by week, because then it becomes a, a big rigor roll. What I, I talked to Jen about this, we've got a bunch of people right now that we've heard in the limbo. This is why we've got this approval here tonight. She's checked with the teachers. She's checked with the principals. We're fine opening up these seats to bring that to have these kids in here for the remainder of the school year. What I'm proposing is that we look at this not in a monthly, we look at this sort of on a quarterly basis and say, look, did we have any kids that left the district? Do we have kids that want in? Great, we can look at this quarterly. It becomes something that is much more workable from your perspective, right? Yeah, because we can keep a running total. Yeah. It'll be easier for us. Yeah, so we're really only going to add three extras because we normally look at this at the end of the school year and we look at what we're looking and anticipating for the next year and we open up school choice seats. So these school choices that we're opening up are just for the remainder of this year. No, no, well, they'll, once they're in those right. seats, then they're in those seats. Can I say? Right. right. And so those these numbers go into mm -hmm. next year's numbers. Yes. That's yes. Then, oh, yes. Yeah, which is a good thing yes. for us. Yes. If we've got kids that we can bring into the district and it doesn't affect class size, yes. that's a good problem for us to have. We add kids to the district and we don't have to, we're not worried about blowing the class sizes through the roof. So correct me if I'm wrong, but typically for opening up school choice seats mid-year, it's for students that have moved out of district but want, wish to continue to remain in district. For some. Or, yeah. And there's some that we're just going to, um, there's siblings that are here that got in and we didn't have seats for them. The and now we do. Got it. Okay. So this, this, and that way, looking at this on a quarterly basis, we'd be actually able to deal with these things in a more timely manner than looking at them on an annual basis. Now it's a one and done. Where this way, if things happen, where kids move out in October and we had no idea, well, if we would have known they would have been gone, we would have maybe opened up another school trip seat. Let's say somebody moves in August. We make the decision in May. If they're all filled in May and then somebody moves up in August, we don't look at it till the following May. There's somebody that's that can't be in the district that we really could open up the spot. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, but off of that, does I don't know what I'm ask. Does this affect the parent that spoke? Yes. That's one of this. So is this, that one of this? this one of these opening up yeah, for yep, that will solve okay. that problem. And okay. this is where this all started. Was after after last yeah, meeting, yeah, we had it. We had a discussion, and it was a question of what can we do, how can we do it. We got legal advice as to what we could and couldn't do. Then we looked at okay, what are the options? Which Jen caused Jen and I to talk about. Well, should we do this more often? We didn't want to do it every meeting. We didn't want to do it once a month because that would become too laborious and it would be crazy. But we both agreed that a quarterly review would make sense. It would allow us to be flexible. It solves all the problems that we currently have right now. It's something that we're able to address. And then going forward, bless you early, um, we're going to deal with this on a quarterly basis going forward. But that solves the issue that came up to our attention last meeting. The grade five example is excellent. We, we didn't open any seats last year when Jen came to me for grade five because it was going to be a, a big group. And now all of a sudden, We've had a bunch of students leave on the field this year and at the end of last year. So we went from worried about our class size in grade five to like, oh, wow, we're, we're really kind of low, yeah. you know? And this so, panel will actually help us in a number of instances on the school choice side. And now we'll have kids from other out of district coming here. 
All right. So can I get a show of hands to accept the motion? Aaron, let the record show the motion passes 700. All right, you're up again. Ports. Uh, just one super, super exciting one um, <laughs> is that we finally got to announce our uh, Green Spoon Excellence in Teaching Award winners. This year we had Anna Hitchcock, who's a mathematics teacher at Southwick Regional School. Um, and what I just loved about um, they, everybody sends in um, their recommendations of why certain people should win. And we, everybody loves teachers. But the thing you need to know about Anna is um, she's bilingual. Am I correct, Joe? She uh, speaks Polish. She speaks Polish. She works with, um, we've got a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugee uh, children that have come in that don't have any um, English at all. She volunteers her time. Um, during her prep time, outside of class time, um, to work with um, our students who um, are not native English speakers and that um, are just learning our language. Um, so uh, in a day and age of where um, teachers are overworked and they're exhausted and they're asked to do more and more and more, um, we have a teacher who really puts it out there and helps our kids and is really making a difference in the lives of our ELL learners. Uh, we also have Carrie Wheeler, another fabulous grade one teacher at Woodland School. Um, she uh, worked uh, on a, we're not going to call it an experiment, but um, she's working um, with Fran Fadinkevich, who was also a Green Spoon winner a few years ago. And they're doing um, where Carrie teaches uh, reading to two um, groups and Fran teaches the math um, to the two groups. Um, and so it's really stepping outside of your comfort zone because as an elementary teacher, like you're used to having your kids like all day long. Um, and she's fabulous. She cares about her kids. Um, it was exciting. And um, I couldn't be prouder to have both of them um, working in our school district. So it's exciting. And it will be a dinner. Are these Grinspoon awards? These are Grinspoon okay. awards. So these are the teacher of the year. Yes. Okay. And um, you'll get invitations to the Grinspoon dinner at May 11th. Yeah. Yeah. Log yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wanted during COVID, so then we just got a celebration at our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We zoomed. Yeah. So, only comment I've got since I've got the new interim principal and the old principal here is maybe a recommendation or a suggestion. I know I joked with Joe some years ago about having a teacher of the year parking spot. Yeah, up at the high school, oh, yeah. that somehow has there is a teacher of the week parking spot that seems to be empty every day. Every every day. day. It's empty because it was a COVID. the teacher of the week was a COVID initiative that we were doing <laughs> when they were in school. No, I feel I can't remember when they were coming to school. <laughs> Yeah, you should totally convert that. No, I think I think you should be teacher of the year. I'm sure we can That's find awesome. eight dollars in the budget and yeah. a new sign. We should have the seniors paint it. Yeah, but well, look at the teachers. They win. Well, look at them. Just say, well, well, they they get, get another sign. Get her a new sign and get a spot for teacher of the year. One, 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 one. I think it's great because I mean it's it, but there should be. A little, you know, they win that award. It's they get huge. a primo parking spot for a year. Well, then you can have the transfer ceremony. They put in their car. Well, I think the teacher of the year left your business. Yeah. 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 They can have some fun with that. Yeah. But just a recommendation, but no, it's a spot that That's a good idea. I park in when the basketball game drops. Right. It's a big spot. But I can around. I put it in that spot. I'm like, I'm like, did someone win the yeah. I don't know if you that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I believe Mrs. Davis brought up. Uh, Beth, when Beth went to Simonette. Yeah. Uh, well, it was also Beth McCarthy that brought it up too. I said, I said, I'm going to take a push. This was even before I was on the school committee. I made a push for the teacher of the year part. But still going. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get it. Um, all right, so for the sake of time here, negotiations, we don't have any negotiations. Um, finance, we just had it. LP back next Thursday, yeah, next Thursday. Had it, I know, yeah. Um, LP back, 
Anything um, for you? Yeah, no. well, nothing crazy, but we the search for a new oh, right. director is underway. And so instead of we used um, a representative from NASDAQ to do the search and the screening. Um, this company you can use MASC or NASDAQ. We ended up going with NASDAQ just because not the stock, not NASDAQ. No. Stock. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what? it's spelled the same though. Or NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ. there you go. NASDAQ. That yes. makes more sense. Um, and um, so the process is in full. The screening committees are being made, and all um, resumes are to be back to NASDAQ by. I forget May first. Okay. And someone's going to be pointed to the position by July first. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, we have a meeting coming up with Liz, right? Yeah, Sometime next, in, uh, next I believe it's week. September 21st. Is our next? Stop laughing. It's getting late. <laughs> so we much. I'm <laughs> <laughs> It's March. It's March 20. I got the number right, okay? March 21st. It and must be like a summer vacation. Four, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, we changed to three. It's the one that we changed to three. March 21st at three. And then we have school committee that night. Okay. Uh, buildings and grounds. We haven't had another meeting. Um, but we did oh, we did send out and told the guy to go start his process, right? For the the grounds. I have con I have reached out to him three times and have not heard back from him. And Eric Weitander has done the same on um Two other issues, and he has not heard back from them as well. Wow. I've had trouble. I've had multiple forms of reaching out to him. Phone That's him. weird. Yes. That's not normal. So, right? no. so I don't know what we do next. Sounds like, it, I mean, unless there's some weird emergency situation going on that we don't know about, it know. would sound like we don't want to go with this person. Why would the cut is the company like we're calling the company, right? Because he, he, he is. is a company. He is the company. Yeah. It's not a company, it's him. Wow. Okay. Well, that, so I, I mean, um, I follow. I followed up on three different occasions in the last since you gave me okay to do it last. Yeah, time. yeah. So what's a month? Maybe not even. A week. No. It's no. A week, do me a favor. Send no, me his contact yeah. info. I yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah. I'm driving from here to Worcester like forever. I can put a call out and see if I can get a hold of him. Yeah. All right. Let's do that, and then we'll we'll report next time. Dang. I hope we can get a hold of him. Yeah. Um. Okay. ILT today um they talked about our summer camp program which is starting june 26 this year and running that week they've had what they 43 extra kids sign up for this they can take 120 we had 163 sign up uh so which is really exciting that's mm -hmm. getting a lot of momentum they have all they have one nurse and what nine, nine teachers that signed up to do it too so we don't need to go out of district for any staff and they're going to talk to um, high school about getting students again to help out there, especially NHS and their um, community service. Um, they talked about what the four different modules that they're doing every day, which sounded very interesting. They get to like build their own storefront and that's about math and marketing and LA sub subject to it. There was a building like an animal robot or something like adapting to that sounded wicked cool. <laughs> There's the skate park. Oh, the skate park was also cool. Right, you know, like a up. fingerboard. <laughs> like it's our second about like it's going on vacation now. <laughs> Can I get my nana? Um, they have 21 kindergartners signed up, which is from five from last year. So the oh, wow. difficulty of having little kids is going to be a concern, but it's very exciting that they're wanting to join the club. Who does this? Who does this? Beth Grady runs it. Yeah. Yeah. She's one of her teachers. Here's a somebody. Coach. Coach. Oh, oh. oh okay. Yeah. And it's a, it's a program yeah, that, yeah. you know, we purchased. It's free. It's at Powder Mill, 8, oh. 845 to 315 or something like that. We're going to 160 kids in here? No, no we're, we're capped at 120. 163 signed up. signed up for it. That'll help us. So we have a long wait. For come for certain. Lottery. Oh, okay. Because that hasn't been a problem in years past. So, so even if you sign up, you may not be accepted. We felt the more equitable way to choose. Is that it? Was there a deadline to apply? Yes. yes. Okay. 
And everybody was told this up front, or this was yes. after the fact. Yeah, then there would be a lot of okay. Well, as long as they're all informed of it ahead of time, that's good. Yeah, I've had friends that did it last year, and she loved it for her kids. Wow. So yeah, it's been growing in popularity because it's been so successful. I, I want to say this is year three. My friend, it is. is. We actually moved it into the East Grant. Um, that's how we've been paying for it. We've been making it free to the community members through the use of the user grant. But um, obviously that will stop. So at some point there may be a cost to the community, but we may, we'll talk about that when the time comes about how we wanna proceed for next year. But um, I would recommend we keep going with it, even if some, there is some cost to the community. Yeah. So. Right. And then we talked about um, the Hill for Literacy Initiative and then some really amazing data presentations um, from um, Emma the, and um, Markowitz. Yep. Um, her title now? I had her as a reading intervention. She was amazing. Laura, yeah, she's my she's my literacy coach now. She's good. She's killing it. So it was really awesome data from Dibbles grades K through four, I oh, believe. Um, was <laughs> Um, just so showing like, awesome those classes. Growth. Those are the grades that it encompasses. Yeah, awesome, awesome growth. So, so really showing that our our literacy initiative, even though it's in the early stages, is really making a difference. And Beth said something about how we have other people from other districts coming to see what we're doing as a district. Like we're like a role model for many of our other districts, even like in Agua. I know they're just starting their health literacy initiative there, um, but they're like modeling themselves after us, which is really humbling and cool. And I just want to let you know, I was at a superintendent's meeting on Friday and multiple superintendents are coming up and coming in to see our math program that we started five years ago that they're just getting on board with now. Yeah, we had South Hadley here today. South Hadley today, and I know Graham, he's coming. Yep. He's got me to talk to me about it. Camden Wilbraham's coming. We have we had charge for that. <laughs> $1,000. But it, 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 I, I think it really speaks to the work that our teachers yeah. are doing. In a green yeah. Yeah. If you want right. to see, you got to pay. <laughs> pay <laughs> <in front of you. laughs> I'm sorry, but the, the shades will go up after you make your contribution to the budget. Yeah, that was a good meeting. <laughs> All right. So, wellness. Everybody's well. Next week. I can't make it after one. Ben. Yeah, I forgot that's for a Ben. No nope. technology. Anything, Pam? No, technology? although I would, I do like your suggestion about um, both of those directors being at town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think especially when we have the capital concerns that come up. Um, yeah. Um, Captain committee, we met last Wednesday. Basically, uh, Police department needs a new HVAC system. The fire department wants to get new garage door openers. They want to expand and kind of change around their sleeping quarters. And they too need um, AC units, stuff like that. So there's a lot of money that- uh, From the capital side this year. Well, we don't have any money in capital, but there's a lot of requests including the uh, vehicles from the school that are on that uh, agenda. So this meeting on the 25th is going to be a blast. Yeah, so uh -huh. I'll say the fire department and um, forget the numbers exactly, 300,000. The police is right around the same. You know, they got their phone last year. Yeah. The department got their phone. Yeah. But I mean, all in with the school, the police, the fire. I mean, it's, it's pushing close to a million. million. Yeah. There, there was another, I know, like a hundred thousand dollar charge. Oh, yeah, fire. something with the PPW. <laughs> I have my minutes. We can pay for our whole Wi Fi upgrade by charging admission to see our math program. And same with the, um, master plan there's actually too much information 
If anybody here wants me to forward the events on the it, it, it honestly, it's um hard to keep up with. It's a lot of it, but there's just a, a ton of information. I will say that that committee is awesome. It's really a good group. Um, we've had some like changing of say the guard, you know, in in and around different uh, committee members. I think it's really kind of refreshing to, to be in that group and there are a ton of like energetic people that really care I mean, seeing, you know, future being prosperous. And I could say it's, it's nice. So I just started that group, right? Yeah. Uh, they're coming up. Yeah, Lucas is, yeah. Next week, I think on the 15th to meet with kind of our students to get their input on some topics as well. And um, yeah, she's away. Uh, uh, I get their first names wrong. Last name is Michaels. Uh, she, she's also one of the Lena. 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 Lena yeah. yeah. She, she's studying abroad. Oh, no, Maria. Maria is in Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, Lucas is funny. He's funny in that group. <laughs> <laughs> he gets to vote in that group. Right? He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> And All right. Logan loves them. Uh, um, athletics, we probably have to have a transition meeting. Yep. Maybe we'll have one. Winter athletics ended, so spring season's Maybe open. Maybe we can have one in the next week or two. We can do the new interim <laughs> principal to our little group. So, FYI, an email never went out about um, uh, registration being open for athletics. This for spring athletics. I swear I got that. I think I yeah, it. Yeah, when? Really? Because I did say it. Yeah. I'll get mine from Ben Bolton. Yeah, yeah. Because my daughter asked, we got the cross huh? Yeah, through family. Uh, yeah, I don't, so maybe, it went, maybe it only went to those that were registered that were in family ID. Maybe. Not once yeah. I got somebody about it. I'm like, I don't know. It's on the web page, too. The link was on the. Yeah. Yeah. I, can get, I can get the link and send it off this week's uh, communication as well. Okay. Here we go. What do we got? Another week or two before this? Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks, maybe. Anybody that can do that? Yeah. And March 20th yeah. might be the yeah. yeah. So it's like a so about a week left. Yeah. So I think March 20th is the so opening. <laughs> All right. Uh, leg, we don't have any legislative. There's nobody here for public comment. Um, does anybody get anything for old business or new business? I'm going to combine them in both. <laughs> All right, I am going to entertain a motion to adjourn, if that's okay. It's all so, so, do you have <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a drill again to uh, meeting? Aaron, let the record show. Motion to pass to 7 Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening.